Hello, in this video we're going to have a look at how we write a um, for loop in pseudocode. Now, a for loop starts with the word for. We will declare the name of a variable. I'm just going to use i here, and i, instead of the, using the equal sign, we will associate it to this and say that it's going to equal 1 to 10. Now that's the starting number 1, and the ending number is 10. And then to close the loop, we're going to say end for. Now, when that runs, everything that is indented, or between those two, will go, and in fact, if we were to write the value of i, like that, then when this ran, the first time it runs, it would be 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. And all the way through uh, to 7, 8, 9, and 10. So that's what that would produce. Sorry about the noise. Um, you also need to tell it to move on to the next value of i. So, I actually don't know any programming languages that do this, but it is here in pseudocode, and it is advancing it. So, for i equals 1 through to 10. Now, the next thing that I'm going to show you is a bit of a more advanced, but since we're talking about a for loop, let's have a quick look at it. So, let's say that we had an array up here, uh, and an array is a variable that can hold multiple values. So, for students equals Fred um, plus, no, sorry, comma, uh, Janice, comma, oh, I don't know, Luke. So, we've only got three. There we go. So, that variable, so that is actually, if we wanted to access just um, Fred, we would in fact act access students and in hard brackets we'd have zero because the first value in an array is traditionally zero. So that's student zero, students zero, sorry, uh, that's students one and that's students two. Well, if I wanted to print out all those values very simply, what I could do, and I know we've got lots of errors on the screen, but just ignore that because it's trying to treat this as real code and of course it's not, it's pseudocode. So we would say for i equals, well we actually want to count at zero, and we want to go up to 2, and then we will print, well, we'll print the variable students, and inside that we'll put the i. So the first time this runs, i equals 0, and that will print Fred. Then it will run again, and i will equal 1, and that will print Janice. And then it will equal 2, and it will print Luke. So it's a very good way to cycle through values in an array by using a for loop, but there are lots of other things we use them for.